Hello friends, today I will be bringing you the gearing guide from season server to endgame. For your first season, you don't have to make full Pentavala since you will get Kaposha accessories for each slot for getting level 62. But I would definitely suggest staying season as long as possible, abusing the seemingly empty season Archie server to grind out silver or special items you might need later. While doing your season, make sure to do your main quests and start completing your logs. Mainly the Igor Bartali, Div Encyclopedia, and Dory Morgrim Secret Journal, because they give you free AP. While you're doing your main quests, you will also get some free stats, which include 1 AP and 1 DP from Land of the Morning Light, as well as 1 AP and 1 DP from other older questlines. You can leave Barrier of Infestation for later, since it has a bit of a gear requirement, which you will be able to meet soon enough after getting out of season. Also, do start your free Pangetina Ring questline as soon as possible and don't skip dailies, so you will be able to get some more AP sooner rather than later. On the second step, you can see that we gain quite a bit of gear score. This is mainly thanks to Magnus, where we pick the free pen Griffon from the Magnus box and put all your granite coffers into it, making it level 4. And your free Kaposha pen necklace from graduating season. You can choose any Kaposha when you graduate, but I suggest picking the necklace since it will be the biggest AP upgrade out of them all. At this step, you should also talk to Jetina and convert all your armors into the same armors as here, regardless if your class is evasion or DR. You do this because Tuvala boots are actually maskans in terms of stats, and Urgons will give you a lot of tankiness compared to them, since they have more than twice the damage reduction. On this step, we also save up for, the, for our first Duo Godder, and depending on what specialization you choose to play, you will buy either Main Hand for Succession, like I show here, or Awakening if you are Awakening. For the next step, you'll be focusing on Reform level 5 on your armor to make it pen later, while working on finishing your journals and buying a very cheap HP cup for your necklace, which is only 250 million silver for 150 HP. Here, you might also consider saving money for your beast lifestone combo. For example, for Witch, Wusa, Maegu, and a lot of other classes, Death Blow is the best combo, and you will notice a decent loot gain after acquiring it. On this step, we will be getting another Duo God weapon and making our Kutum reform level 4. This is very cheap and will give you the same AP as Pen Kutum for a fraction of its cost. At this point, you should also have enough materials to make your Regina Crescent Tet and start the long pen grind. On our fifth step, you will be saving up for a second Tet Crescent to get some AP, as well as finishing Jetina quest for Red Nose, making it pen and putting Kafras level 4 in it. After finishing the previous step, you should also start to actively hunt for Garmoth or Karanda Heart to upgrade your Awakening weapon and give you one more crystal slot. For the next step, you will be buying a Pen Pegasus and a Ted Tungrid belt for some more AP and DP, while leaving the boots as is for a few more steps, since at this point going evasion is still not worth. The next step is quite short, we will be just getting Vel's heart by either buying or getting carried on boss drop, which would be the best case scenario of course. If you want to be more efficient with Vel spawns, you can create another character and leave it at the boss, allowing you to swap to it and skip the whole trip back and forth on your main. On step number 8, you will be finishing grinding or buying your other cups, as well as crystals and lifestone combo, if you haven't done this on previous steps. Without going into too much detail, your crystals should be looking something like this for most spots. On the next step, we'll be making the decision between pen DR and evasion boots. For this one, I would always suggest going DR, since it is way more versatile from low to high GS. Due to how evasion scaling works, your DR gear will work well even on an evasion class. But if you choose evasion and want to play a DR class, you will take significantly more damage. For this step, you will be close to or already finishing your Pen Ring. If you already did, well done, finish up your Kafras level 10 on Red Nose and turn it into a Fallen God, taking it to Pry. This is also a good time to enchant your Vel's Heart, this will cost you around 6 billion total and in turn give you 5% to all resist, 4 DP and some other buffs. For this step, finish up Kafrasing your gloves and helmet, buy or grind out the flames and turn them into Fallen Gods and tap them to Pry. Also, finally finish reforming your Kutum, make it pen and put Kafras for Kafras level 1 into it. 
this step is the same as previous step, but with evasion gear instead as an example. Remember that you can always exchange your gloves to the other variant for only 2 billion. Since we are good on AP for the spots we can grind, for the next step we will be putting all our following guards to duo and our boots to Kafra level 9. This will greatly boost our survivability and will let us move to the next step. Reminder that by this point your log should look something like this, with barrier of infestation done and other logs cleaned up for additional gear score points. For the last pre endgame part of our build you'll be making your Kutum C7 and finally upgrading your earrings getting yourself two Ted Distortion or Vahas, whichever you prefer. They have the same stat but different icons and sometimes one is cheaper than the other. Also, don't forget to put cups on it as soon as possible. 3 AP might not seem like a lot, but it does matter. Now we are done with pre-endgame stuff and all your future upgrades will start to cost way more than before. With this current gear you can grind pretty much any spot in the game, for the rare exceptions of the 1k AP Dekia zones and crypt. The first two endgame upgrades will be a pan crescent ring that will boost your awakening AP to 301 and the Tet Deboreka necklace which will put you at 305 awakening and 303 succession. The second, third and fourth endgame steps are pretty straightforward although require a lot more time than your progression up to this point. You will be looking at getting your first pan blacksters on step 2 along with C14 Kutum. You don't need to buy Kafras from the market, while grinding money or something else, you'll be getting lots of them. Use them to push your boots and Kutum. For part 3, you'll be looking at getting a Ted Debareka belt, either by making it yourself or by getting the money to straight up buy it. After getting the belt, you want to get your second Pen Black Star. At this point, with the good crystals and elixir rotation, you're going to be over or at 1k monster AP with a monster AP add-on and your class pre-buffs. For the last part of our endgame build you'll be putting Kafras level 20 in your boots and Kutum if you haven't already, while getting your last Debo, the earring, which will activate the Debareka set bonus and conclude your journey. Well, that's about it. I've also included future steps past endgame on the planner. You can check it out for yourself if you're curious to see what more can you do. Most of the steps have specific notes on why would I do it a certain way, just in case I didn't explain it with enough detail in the video. Hope you enjoyed it nonetheless, take care!